Are you fertilizing and watering your lawn regularly and still not getting the results you're looking for? Well, keep watching because I'm going to tell you about a really important step you might be missing. Hey guys, it's Jason here with Next Level DIY. In this video, I want to help you figure out why your fertilizer might not be working up to its full potential. And hey, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay on top of all my new videos. For a bunch of years, I thought I knew a decent amount about basic lawn care. You fertilize, water, mow it regularly, and you should end up with some decent results. What I didn't know is how extremely important my soil analysis was, specifically my soil pH level. It's really simple, but your soil's pH level is extremely important in establishing and maintaining a healthy lawn. Over the years, I was actually pretty surprised to find out how many people didn't check their soil's pH level on a regular basis. There are some telltale signs to know that your soil's pH level is off balance. For example, if you find yourself putting down a uh, high nitrogen content fertilizer, like a starter fertilizer, for example, and you don't see that kick in about a week, there's a good chance that your soil's pH is off, which is preventing that nutrients from being absorbed into the grass plant. Another telltale sign would be if you start seeing moss or mushrooms in areas that are sunny, not shady where you would normally expect things like that. One thing that I noticed on my lawn was one spring I had developed a lot of random weeds in a specific area that I never really saw weeds before. And once I had checked my soil's pH level and noticed that it was really low, it explained why certain weeds were growing there more than the grass. So I recommend testing your pH once a year. Personally, I do it twice a year. Once early in the spring and, and again early in the fall. The one I do in the spring, I actually use one of those mail-in kits where you take a soil sample, put it in a special container, and you mail it out and they do a full soil analysis on that. That gives me a huge amount of information early in the spring so that I know how to um, replace the missing macro or micronutrients that, that are going on. The one I do in the fall, I use one of those simple home kits where it basically just checks the pH and at that point I can establish whether or not I need to put down an application of lime. So I just wanted to reinstate why having the correct pH is so important. If you are too far out of the correct range for your soil type, what can happen is all those nutrients from the fertilizer you apply will get locked into the soil and not be able to be taken up by your lawn's root system. And now that fall is just around the corner, you're either going to be starting a lawn renovation or you're going to be pushing for some regrowth from that summer stress. Either way, you're going to be using some fertilizers with a higher nitrogen content. And if you want to make sure that you're not wasting your time and money, then always be sure your soil is properly balanced. To test for your soil's pH is a pretty simple procedure, but there are certain steps you're going to want to follow in order to get accurate results. First, you should be taking your samples from at least 4 inches deep. You want to be near your lawn's root system. Second, you'll want to determine whether or not you're taking a samples from a specific area or you're testing your entire lawn. I recommend that you take at least one sample for every 1,000 to 1,500 square feet. My lawn is pretty consistent, so I'll be combining all my samples into one container and treating it as one test. What I use is a soil probe like this in order to get the soil from the correct depth. I actually made this probe because the ones online I saw were overpriced and kind of flimsy. So keep your eyes out, I'm probably going to be making a video on how I made this.
now that you've gathered up all of your soil samples into one container, um, I recommend that you let it dry out for about a day. That way it's easier to break up really fine and make sure you remove all the rocks and organic material. It's also critical that you mix this really well so that it accurately represents all the areas you're testing. Now you can either mail it in in one of those test kits or use one of these um, do-it-yourself kits uh, that you can buy at any kind of local hardware store. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this information will help you get the most out of your fall growing season. Give this video a like if you want and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.